Icons were a way of making Christ accessible to all people. The episode from scripture that's being portrayed or the life of the saint, so the emphasis is not on a realistic presentation. It's a very rare art and it also takes a lifetime to learn the theology as well as the craft of doing it. Like his famous Greek ancestors before him, Euripides Ripkastaris is a teacher artist, a bit of a philosopher, and theologian. You know, you have to know how to do a lot of things to make a living as an artist in the Midwest. Born in Thessaloniki, Greece, his parents immigrated to St. Louis right after he was born. He was raised in St. Louis and so were his children. His studio, Petrifine Arts, is located in the South City neighborhood of Holly Hills. I complained in kindergarten that I didn't have white paint and it really made an impression on the teacher because she said you have six other colors rip like so I guess I knew that I was making distinctions about special things because I asked for white. His studio art is a mix of his years as a commercial illustrator before pursuing his passion for fine art. He is the first Hellenic American to be chosen by the U.S. Olympic Committee to commemorate U.S. athletes. His work even got the attention of the rock star Sting a few years ago, who commissioned this piece from Rip for his private estate. This is St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church in downtown St. Louis. Rip was raised in the faith. In fact, his father was a priest. So you would think he would be naturally drawn to iconography, but he says it was a good dozen years before he had an epiphany. It came time for me to give a gift to my goddaughter, and I made an icon in a box of a mother and child, and so many people responded to that and wanted me to make another one that just seemed like it was natural that I had been picked. In I had not chose iconography, and the response that I got, it had chosen me. Iconography is a Greek word that literally means image to write. Walk into any Orthodox Christian church in St. Louis, whether it's Greek, Russian, Romanian, or Serbian, and you will see icons of saints and martyrs everywhere. So we live in a literate society today, so we don't think what things were like, but one of the main arguments for decorating our churches in this way um, was that, first of all, people could not read, and they could not experience the life of Christ by reading the Bible like we can today. Um, so the icons were a way of making Christ accessible to all people. A perfect example is depicted on the ceiling of Assumption Greek Orthodox Church in town and country. As an Orthodox Christian, I was always taught we don't worship the icons, but we venerate them for what and who they represent. The worship goes to God, but the icon presents to us, somehow connects us with, with God. Rip says he's still amazed he's one of a few artists in the United States who has the blessing of Greek Orthodox clergy to create icons in their churches all over the country. That's because iconography requires attention to detail and patience, two disciplines Rip says he lacked as a fidgety child during church services, using his imagination to help him sit still. It also takes a lifetime to learn the theology as well as the craft of doing it. But in the modern era, uh, everyone has gone to painting on canvas in the studio. Because when you're upside down, I, you know, everybody thinks about it being romantic to do it like Michelangelo did. But there's nothing like having the lights and your easels and everything where you can really get the details right in the studio. And then you get them up there and you finish it off within that space. Canvas icons like these that recently went up at Assumption are more durable. Rip says if there's water damage, the canvas can be peeled off the wall, repaired, and put back up. Back at his studio, Rip relies on a mix of digital media to prepare his sketches before he begins work on an actual icon. We want to get just the protein that's inside of the 
yoke. Smaller icons made of wood can be seen not only in churches, but in Orthodox homes. We'll just uh, put then some of this powder in with that egg yolk and put just a little vinegar. Just like the ancients did, Rip that. makes the egg temper paint. The yolk, he tells me, acts as a binder with the color or pigment coming from the ground, either iron or semi-precious stones. And it lasts thousands of years. Once that protein dries, it's there forever. Also lasting forever is the gilded gold that adorns most icons, which Rip gives me a chance to apply. Like this? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. There's not gradations. It's all flat colors next to flat colors in a really elegant way with the gold leaf. It's, it's a cool style. You can see his work at the new St. Nicholas Family Life Center at Interstate 270 and 40, and at the two Greek churches in St. Louis, Assumption in Town and Country, where his father served as priest, and St. Nicholas, where he did a major renovation of the church's ceiling, which was painted in the style of Italian Renaissance, popular back in 1930 when it was built. The challenge was to keep the integrity of the original architect and iconographer that conceived the job and also to not change it so much that people felt uncomfortable with it so that they thought that we had done something wrong with their you know beloved church. He kept the decorative belts at St. Nick's but added the clouds and eight pointed stars something he'd seen in monasteries in Greece and tied in with the stained glass. So if it's an eight pointed star it suggests the eighth day or the day outside of time the day of heaven. The teacher and Rip got the Sunday school kids involved in the renovation by asking them to create similar stars with the gold gilding. The Sunday school teachers had them turn the star over and had them think about the people that pray for them and the people that love them, and they wrote the names of their family members on there. For me, very moving, and I still get choked up sometimes when I look up and see those stars and think about the kids applying the gold leaf and because some of them were my own children. Currently Rip is working with local priests to put together an iconography program for inner city kids. I mean it's such a treasure and to to be able to be part of a tradition that's going on for 2,000 years and to be able to help extend it that's really special. The irony is not lost on Rip that the once fidgety kid in church has grown into a man with a steady hand, creating religious art that is as eternal as his faith. For State of the Arts, I'm Victoria Babu.